what can startups be doing differently in this current capital climate, either to survive if they already are a startup or to raise capital if they're looking? Yeah, absolutely. So, so given the uh, current economic climate, I think like many founders are tempted to say like, we're going to you know, slow down, we're going to press pause and we're going to extend our runway. Um, runway meaning the amount of cash they have uh, still available um, as far as possible. Um, but often like that is not uh, a sane approach because you need to make progress so mm. that when the economy rebounds, you haven't ceded market share to a competitor, ignored potential opportunities for product iteration that would enable you to expand into those adjacent uh, categories, you know, things like that. So instead, I think what we're really advising our portfolio companies to do is to understand clearly the ROI associated with uh, their investments, with with you know, the bets that they're taking, and think critically about the milestones that they need to achieve to unlock a subsequent round of financing. Now, like this all may sound kind of obvious because more or less what I'm saying is that like they need to be disciplined, but I actually think this is an area where data and data science has a very clear role. Like we are we are not in a phase in history where you could ignore your LTV to CAC ratio. We are not What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, the the lifetime value of your customer compared to the cost of acquiring that customer. Gotcha. You're we're not you know at a point of time in history where you can just ship anything. Like you need to run experiments. You need to understand how those those product bets are impacting your strategic KPIs and metrics. So. You know, we are telling our portfolio companies, think about what you need to achieve, exercise discipline, but also you know, measure what you're doing and its impact. For those that are thinking about raising capital, well, of course, you know, the first strategy that I alluded to was like, extend your runway, wait a little bit, because there are a lot of investors that are kind of sitting on their hands right now. But for those who are thinking about, you know, raising for the first time, I think what yeah. I've seen is that like, the bar has shifted a bit higher. So it may no longer be enough to come in you know, with that vision and the MVP. Now investors might want to see that like you have uh, lined up a set of potential design partners, or, you know, you have built a, a prototype that like you put on Hacker News and that attracted, you know, a lot of attention and adoption. So, you know, I'm not saying like, uh, in order to raise seed funding, you need to have a million dollars in revenue or ARR, recurring revenue, but uh, you probably need a bit more evidence that your idea is is going to land. That is super helpful advice, Sarah. And so it seems clear that part of your role as a venture capitalist is not just to provide the capital, but also to provide guidance to founders uh, and to help them in succeeding in commercializing their products. So if we have listeners out there who have a startup idea or maybe even an early stage prototype but they don't know how to get venture capital investment. You've already given us some insight. You know, we need to be particularly in this climate. We need to be demonstrating the value or maybe even having some recurring revenue already for a product. Um, what else does it take? What kind of roadmap should a listener with a startup idea uh, put together to go from idea to funding? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think one of the most important things for startups is to learn fast so that they can iterate fast. So often, you know, that that first phase involves speaking with hundreds, at least, you know, dozens of potential users and right. getting feedback on the idea. 
Now, the closer that you can get to an application, the more precise the feedback will be. It, it's hard to give like high fidelity feedback in response to a you know, verbal articulation of an idea. It's slightly easier if there's a deck, even better if there's a prototype, even better if, if you know, there, there's an application to, to actually demo um, or put in the hands of potential users. The other thing that we've seen too is that you can sometimes test your ideas not only through user and market research through these conversations, but also through content. Can you, you know, write a blog post where you articulate some of the uh, key assumptions that you're making about the product or, or some of the pillars of its value proposition? If you do that, how do people react? So, so a lot of what we do in the early stages is information gathering. The next set of things that uh, we really think deeply about too is who do we need to hire in order to you know, manifest this idea? Mm -hmm. um, we primarily, as I said before, invest in technical founders. And so they can typically build the prototype themselves. But in some cases, they're going to have to hire their first engineer. What does it take to you know, convince somebody to leave their you know, job at like a thing company or mm -hmm. a like growth stage startup mm -hmm. and join a company that has no product or or like no revenue. Uh, we can provide them with guidance on like how to think about a hiring pitch, how to think about a hiring roadmap. So often, you know, we are really kind of focused on on the hiring strategy, on the product strategy and maybe thinking about like some of the experiments that we want to run to see like the right way to potentially sell this.